tide 16 years after the tectonicum caused the continents of Felrosia to grind back into the Pangea-like state the planet started out in. Ooh. Max, go. All right. You have 45 seconds. In the city of Kildertown, a giant war bridge crossed down, uh, earthquaking and destroying half the city. Uh, bugbears and goblins started attacking. Our four adventurers came out of an inn. They defeated some of these bugbears, were met by an innkeeper, sending them to a cave down south where they saved a few children, no, 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 notably one named Kevin. Uh, they saved that Kevin, went out, met uh, Gene Poole, the captain of the resistance. That captain of the resistance brought them out of the town into a small resistance camp. Uh, that was day one. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, they went. They started traveling towards Druin Tall. That was day one. Let's go. Mm -hmm. While on the road to Druin Tall, our party encountered two bugbears attacking a lady in a farmhouse. Owlbears. 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 <laughs> I did that in the stream too. Give there were two owlbears. <laughs> yeah, you get. Uh, you get a uh, point. Uh, the points mean nothing. D don't write it down. Uh, then uh, the owlbears. Uh, they did. They barely saved them. The military had to kill one of them. Uh, and True. then they went to Druin Tall. They found out that there was a spy in Druin Tall, so they went up to the room. And then uh, they uh, tracked down the spy using some shenanigans. Uh, and they went to the council chamber where they met the council of the war. Uh, the council of the war was like, "Oh shit! You found the spy. You guys have magic, and you do magical things to save people. Maybe you could help us out. Can you go to Sizzle uh, and um, stop the uh, the undead thing that's happening there? Uh, but also there." Uh, something going on in Ula and we need to get some magical items there uh, or you could go to Temper Academy because the spy says that there's going to be an attack there soon uh, and that is where Grunge and uh, Garrick went to school and so they uh, decide that they're going to go through the Temper Academy because uh, Grunge's dad can teleport them to the Temper Academy they're going to go there first stop the attack and then head to Sizzle uh, and they end the day by teleporting to the Temper Academy and then when they got to the Temper Academy they went to the Lost Path they uh, met uh, the vampire that turned Grunge into a Dumpir they fought a blue dragon then they went back across the water they uh, went into the Warding Stone room where they found Tetram, the Loxodon Welly uh, general dude who's a really bad guy, uh, and he cleaved off uh, Grimswald, Grunge's father's arm, uh, and uh, his mom almost died. Uh, and then the Warding Stone was broken, and Tetram escaped as his best friend was murdered at the final last second. Holy shit! <laughs> I have a big ass. Um, the, the crew, the crew uh, found a ship uh, with a ship a hot priest ship captain named Terran. They made their way on a seven day travel towards the Sizzlok. On the way, they fought a couple things, namely a married car salesman trying to force them to make a bad wish. Uh, when they arrived, they arrived at Sizzlok, uh, this swamp like town full of these uh, small lizard folk creatures. They were be uh, being attacked by these strange aberrant zombies. These strange aberrant zombies had little yellow eyes, very important for later. As they killed these zombies and talked to the lizard folk, they were sent later into a lake to fight an aboleth nihileth. Uh, a creature from the nightmare, a resemblance of something that Alara knew before. Uh, when they did that afterwards, they made their way back to the ship, started making their way uh, through the sea, trying to find a new path towards possibly Mag. That's it. Also All right, uh, on the way to Mag, they realized that they were going to get, um, uh, they, they were attacked by a slot and some mermaids, uh, and then they realized that the ship was damaged because of a fireball, uh, and so they had to stop in, uh, oh, and uh, uh, Ghost Malone died valiantly fighting the slot. Uh, they had to stop because the, uh, Broken Sail was going to make it take too long to get all the way up to Port Nug, so they stopped in the Harpy Hideaway. Well, in the Harpy Hideaway, they got drunk. They were kind of a bitch to Terran. Uh, that was mostly Feynora, and so he left a little bit upset after Alara tried to give him a, a seagull as like kind of a parting gift so that he wouldn't be alone, but seagulls are the most annoying bird. Uh, and so they met uh, uh, Candice, a uh, lizard folk who has a magical carriage uh, that is pulled by quicklings, uh, and so they were going to be able to get to Mag faster by ground than by sea, and that's why they fired Terran. Uh, they put Avril Leviathan in a wheelchair hoping that they were going to wheelchair her around the world. Uh, that, uh, as soon as they got, oh, uh, on the road north towards Mag in that carriage, they got pulled over by bugbears who inspected them, but uh, due to a couple good disguised selves and some good line, uh, they managed to just avoid that, um, uh, the, 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 that patrol entirely. Uh, and they made their way to Sug, a uh, smaller uh, orc city south of Mag. In Sug, they got kicked out of the Well Tucked In because Maple Everhard freaked out when she saw that they had a... Uh, l um, a zombified mermaid who was wearing a paper bag uh, and a flower crown on her head and was strapped to a wheelchair by a belt. Uh, and so they went to the Broken Ho, where they were given the mission. Uh, Grunge actually gave his first performance, uh, which was excellent, despite the fact that he disguised himself to have a guitar but couldn't play it because it was just a fake guitar. Uh, but the performance was still excellent like and the crowd loved it. Uh, so the Das Well was. Uh, poisoning people, and so they went down there and they fought two bone devils, uh, one of whom whispered, Karashtar, at Alara, freaking her the fuck out, uh, and they got the um, immovable rod. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Nice.
A hot, steamy, spicy session of political intrigue then ensued. The group left for the well, becoming heroes to the orcs of Sug. With a missive from the chief of the town and the uh, orc innkeeper that they had befriended, they made their way towards Mag. Arriving there, uh, they disguised themselves moving through town as they saw wanted posters with their faces on them. They made, them, uh, they made their way to uh, a beautiful, nice uh, whiskey distillery where they were trying to find room and board, discovering they couldn't find room and board. They went to the next, the place next door, another well-tucked in, seemingly with a maple, uh, ever, ever would, ever hard, ever hard, ever hard. Ever hard. They didn't recognize them. Strange. Uh, as they did that, they went upstairs, got the rooms, found her amazing, huge disguise uh, drag um, uh, uh, place, uh, got themselves up all fancy, went next door, and started like asking people around about the local politics. They saw an ambassador slash merchant that was uh, receiving extra attention. They spied around. Grunge went on a super detective spy mission, went upstairs, found out a lot of things about how the human body works, and also <laughs> found some information about how this entity was essentially catching missives from man's respite and uh, trying to frame them for uh, attacking the carts uh, uh, out of town, breaking the treaty between the mag orcs uh, and the humans of Man's Respite and everyone from South Echelon. The party then tried to figure out a way to get into the Ceasing Feast, a huge, huge, huge sort of festival ball in mag that allowed uh, political uh, leaders and things to get around where Asseldexi was gonna be there, the first uh, general that they heard about and uh, were able to see in person. Asseldexi uh, was attempting to get uh, the orc general to sign a little bit of, of a new treaty, uh, putting more resource towards the empire for their war against uh, South Echelon. As that signature was happening, the group uh, figured out over time that there was, um, with Grunge's amazing investigation, that this ambassador was having a disguised self on them. Uh, they dispel magic that disguised self in person. The, uh, the orc chief saw that, saw that this was definitely goblin engineering because there, there was this like freaky Friday, freaky Friday, Five Night at Freddy's type automaton under the disguise, uh, angry that that wasn't his friend. This ambassador sliced its head off. All the goblins in the room psh, created a huge uh, smoke as Astrodexy flew out the group. Uh, flew th on a magic broom and uh, on a giant crane that Alara turned into, chased her down and ah, fought. Giant swan. Giant swan. There we go. First fuck up. Of course, it's me. Uh, they flew over and Second. murdered her. After they, mur <laughs> but before they murdered her, Asseldex killed Alara in cold blood. Uh, the group managed to revive Alara, and after Asseldexi was slain, Goth, uh, uh, blah, 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 Grunge Goth Tongue raised her uh, as a zombie. That's Woo! what happened. Woo, 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 woo. All right. Julia, Julia. Julia. Uh, Let's go. Did, Julia. I was like, absolutely not. Uh, then they kept for the night uh, uh, hidden because of a chipmunk that really wanted to dig. Uh, <laughs> the next day, they rode back into Mag Disguise, not uh, knowing what the political climate was going to be there, only to discover that the citizens of Mag were uh, very concerned about the lives of the four heroes that had uh, uh, uncovered Asaldexi's plot and this automaton. Uh, when they got to the tribal chief of these orcs, he uh, was like, hey guys, uh, I need to convince the people that we should go to war. I want to go to war. You guys want to go to war, but like the people might not. So can we uh, parade you through the streets with her body? And so they put Asaldexi on a parade float and they went through the streets of Mag convincing everyone of her uh, misdeeds uh, and also showing that the Bugbear Empire can be defeated at times and that it was worth getting together to fight. They went back to the thing and the tribe tribal chief was like, hey, uh, actually, could you guys um, uh, go to the dwarves and help them with their situation? Because if the dwarves could outfit us with some better weapons and armor, we might actually be able to make this a real fight. Uh, the uh, party then went to go back and get on to the cart with uh, 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 K, 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 Clarence. K, no, Candace. Clarence, Clarence is a different person. Oh, we did Clarence. talk about Clarence. We'll get to Clarence later. Um, Candace. Um, and uh, Candace's cart had two dwarves on it who were like, you better fucking come. And they're like, we will come. I promise you that we'll come. But we're, you, you're going to get there in 10 days. We're going to go to Ula first uh, because Clarence uh, is in Ula and he needs help. Uh, they're uh, doing something there. Uh, so they teleported down to Ula where uh, the teleportation stone was actually broken. And so they ended up dropping through the air into a lycanthropy pit. Uh, they fought the werewolves and a Fomorian. Uh, in the course of the battle, Garrick was bitten and he was cursed with lycanthropy. Eh, peanut butter. <laughs> Disadvantage. No! The uh, battle ended and uh, Grunge, uh, uh, Chantal had to leave, so we uh, story reasoned away that Grunge was just making zombies while they went downstairs to go fight uh, the people downstairs, only to discover that downstairs was a dragonborn and some uh, gnolls and uh, his baby Zorn. Uh, the baby Zorn uh, and the, dra the gnolls uh, immediately got scared and ran away uh, because of an ice storm that was dropped on them inside. It freaked them the fuck out and the dragonborn turned coward and began to uh, accept that he was uh, tied up. Clarence was outside during this, uh, fighting a battle, fighting a war with all of the humans, uh, but our party decided the best thing to do was to short rest uh, so that they could get their spell slots back. 
During the short rest, Alara convinced the Dragonborn that making tea might be a fun life that he would want to le lead one day, uh, and they found out that his name was Tenderis, and Tenderis was like, hey, yo, fuck the Dragonborns, I'm with you guys now. Uh, and he became an ally when in the fall ensuing combat, they fought the Baron of Ula, a Cyclops with a magic eye that was doing wonky things like turn Garrick into a dog for one round before him being bonked by a giant club. Uh, in that fight, they also fought a Yawclaw and uh, a couple of gnolls. The last of the gnolls was actually taken by, by Tenderis in a surprise betrayal of his former team. Uh, then that's where it ended. Clarence, yeah, exactly. oh, Clarence stole his kill! Clarence stole oh, and Clarence, Clarence killed the Cyclops, um, stealing the kill, which uh, Garrick uh, I lose fuck, the jar. had a fuck problem Clarence. with because he has a small penis and it doesn't work when he drinks whiskey. Fuck Clarence. Wow. I don't have whiskey, Garrick! Clarence fucks. Uh, the group then uh, bur bursted into the castle, saving the king from two gnolls. The king gave them a small key to the uh, downstairs vault that hadn't been opened uh, since he has become king of Ula, not uh, knowing what was under there. Artifacts of the city to be kept and used uh, in dire emergencies, but they were sacked before they could ever do so. The group went downstairs, opened the door, found a pile of gold with a gold dragon egg sitting on top of it. Three magical runes of time, past, present, future, uh, kept this, room, uh, this uh, egg in stasis so it would not die. It must have been down there for decades. The group, through a ritual of love, kindness, friendship, and fire, hatched the egg. And they named the dragon... Aurelia. Aurelia. Aurelia, the baby dragon, was born. Aurelia was the maid of honor at Clarissa and my wedding, uh, weirdly. Completely unintentional. It means golden yeah. one, or golden child. Yeah. You cannot stop playing with those dice. I am stimming hard. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, and then afterwards the group went upstairs and ended up finishing up the, the rest of the Battle of Ula as their baby dragon, and Giant Garrick uh, slayed an ogre, um, and afterwards the group rested for the evening, had a bit of a camp, <laughs> and made their way. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, and got cured of lycanthropy. Garrick got cured of lycanthropy by Grunge, asking okay. him if he wanted to explore this part of himself. I, yeah. Uh, but uh, instead decided he didn't want to accidentally harm his friends, as Garrick that evening tried to lock himself back in the vault, not to hurt anybody. Yeah, uh, the group then, this is when I'm getting wonky, the group then made their way up to. Uh, this is when you guys were trying to decide where to go, the Don Smithy or Del Rogue Spear. Uh, yeah. Del Spear. So uh, you uh, had a, a text exchange with uh, Taryn, costing him a total of probably eight spell slots, from <laughs> third all the way to sixth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he he informed them that if they made their way to Small Hand, where he was going to land, uh, that he they could um, that he could bring them to his village. They went to Small Hand, figured out his village was uh, Fisherman's Grove, the same village that Feanor was from, thus the relation to Galvu, the god of, well, the weathern. Night at the um, Rolling Rock. The group had the night at the Rolling Rock, a, a concert that they wanted to go see, where uh, Grunge unknowingly fed Garrick himself uh, and Terran a love potion. Shena shenanigans ensued, characters kissed, um, and afterwards the group made their way uh, by flight towards uh, the Dawn Smithy. Uh, after an excursion down under the Dawn Smithy, speaking to uh, the king of the dwarves, uh, they made their way down and fought a large, skittering, horror, fire lava creature, once again, with a yellow eye. Um, that's where, and they defeated it, that's where you came in. Yep, 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 yep. <clears throat> nice, let's go. All right, uh, they defeated the Skittering Horde. Uh, they opened its carcass up, brought Terran back, uh, and walked over to the forge. Uh, this, I believe, is where they got the rope of entanglement, maybe? I don't know, there were items. Uh, they went to the forge, and uh, using their magic, they, they got this, uh, uh, this pattern to open up. Uh, and just when it looked like the forge might begin to light itself and uh, become on fire, uh, an Efreet uh, came out of it. Uh, this Efreet started to fuck them up uh, by flying over the lava and making it very difficult to get into melee with him. Uh, and just when it seemed like maybe they had the upper hand, and Aaron Yes was summoned by chat to join the fight, uh, and the fight got very hard. Uh, eventually, the Afrit was like, oh hey, this is not gonna work for me, and he plane shifted out of there, uh, promising the chat, the party that he would see them later. Uh, and then uh, in a moment of uh, desperation, Garrick Misty stepped on top of the Aaron Yes, missed it in a grapple, and fell into the lava, uh, falling unconscious as he waded out of the lava, getting onto the land. Uh, the uh, Aaron Yes was then killed, uh, by Alara, I believe. Um, I don't even know anymore. Yes. Uh, but not, oh yeah, yeah. But yeah, not she, until after Alara heard it say that she was disappointed uh, that she had thought that whispering to the Afrit in the forge over these 16 years had maybe uh, made it return her feelings for her. Oh. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, then uh, the uh, party went upstairs and got in the hot tub to uh, wash off uh, the caked remains of all of their death and destruction. Uh, and the king of the dwarves said some very nice things. He gave Garrick a full uh, suit of plate armor that perfectly matched his gauntlets because the dwarves worked overnight. Uh, and uh, they also got the Tome of Regret, a single-use item that will allow them to roll back the entire game to uh, dice rolls uh, in a, uh, as a reaction. Uh, the party then went to bed, but not until after Garrick uh, went and tried to sneak over to uh, Feynor's room, but stumbled in the hallway and smacked the door uh, so that everyone knew that he went in there, uh, and he also forgot to leave uh, before he went to bed. So they spent the night together for the first time, cuddling uh, moments after Garrick's uh, death. The uh, party then went to... The, the party would then went back to Ula. No, the party then went to F Fisherman's Grove, where mm -hmm. they discovered that the town had been emptied uh, into the town hall after Garrick had uh, crossed a magic uh, ward that made him drop his uh, invisibility. Uh, when he got up to the thing, it was empty, everything was empty, so they went inside and they saw that the uh, town hall was basically just a hole and a shackled man who'd been pretty beat up. Uh, they, uh, Taryn mostly uh, freed that man, uh, and <laughs> the party... <laughs> under a large direction and healing No, him. not at all. Uh, you guys were having a full-on conversation when Taryn went, we I'm gonna go unshackle this man. Uh, yeah, we gave him a healing potion and blankets and rations and They did do that after Taryn kind of made them acknowledge that they uh, healed this man and then left him shackled. Ilara healed him before Taryn did it. They went down the hallway uh, and uh, they found a puzzle that was submitted by our Kickstarter that involved Garrick and Alara falling into pools of cold water. And Feynora. Feynora, thank you. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, th they found out that there was a secret tunnel uh, through the mountain uh, that led to some, a minotaur fight with some pit fiends. Before they could go do that, though, which was on his shift, uh, Alara tried to hold a sunbeam uh, and then, uh, in a moment of desperation, blasted <laughs> Grunge with the sunbeam and killed Abby for the second time. Uh, while she was invisible. While she was invisible. Grunge was also invisible. Uh, poor zombies were looking up at their master and then just saw him get blasted by the sun. Uh, they did solve that puzzle. Uh, like they solved all the puzzles, my players are very smart. <laughs> oh man, the party uh, finished through uh, the puzzle in the uh, dungeon and saw the, the shackled, beaten, dehumanized, welted, and sooty, dirty uh, people that- like that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oppenheimer, baby. Yeah. It's Barbenheimer today. Oh, it's Seriously. Barbenheimer today. Um, uh, people, uh, they saw that they were charmed, being worked past what they were physically able to do. A lot of them dying in the process. In this room, they saw one person left dead there as a monument for anyone else who tried to escape or fight back. Uh, the group healed people up um, and made their way through uh, the tunnel to fight a pit fiend, the overlord of this space. After defeating the, fit, the pit fiend and the minotaur that was in that room, the players then um, uh, moved uh, down the tunnel and found this giant, giant cavern with two pathways, one leading north towards Delbrook Spear and one leading west towards the Kin of Men. Um, the players then decided to come back later on. Uh, they went upstairs, brought the villagers out, um, healed them up, uh, gave them some food. Um, Fenora brought Garrick to her, the shattered remains of her old home. Uh, Taryn and um, uh, Alara went uh, fishing in the water to look at the stars, and Grunge took that, the, the body that was uh, left as a monument and asked uh, who, whose body that was. Um, a young man named James came out and spoke to him, and Grunge asked if he wanted to ask him a few questions uh, after his, he passed away. And then the son, after reunion with his father, crying a little bit, went back to Grunge and asked if he could reanimate him so he can get some fucking revenge on these motherfuckers. Zedderog just bought all the postcards! Yeah! Oh! Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, afterwards, the party took a long rest and uh, started making their way towards Delroke Spear. After the same James said there was a rail cart system going up uh, to Delroke Spear, this is how they've been traveling so fast through um, the, uh, hor the horrors in between Delroke Spear and Fisherman's Grove. Uh, they made their way up there, uh, not before uh, Garrick failed on a scry spell that, he was, that unknowingly happened to him. Making their way out there, uh, Garrick transformed himself as Ten Tendaris, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, as Tendaris. Uh, moving outside, people, uh, a lot of the dragonborn there seemingly not knowing who they were. They went outside and they were uh, attacked by Tetram flying a black dragon. Tetram landed down and the party started engaging the two of them. After some uh, hits and exchanges, uh, Tetram went up to Alara and pulled her quarry out of her, teleported away. The party started fighting the black dragon uh, until, uh, through a very, very lucky plane shift, Alara plane shifted him somewhere else. And I believe that's where we left off with you. Yep, yep. okay, perfect. 
Oh boy. We did a lot of these. All right. Uh, so uh, the party then found a thicket of woods to rest in before the uh, assault on Delrook Spear, uh, where they spent the night. Uh, and then they woke up, uh, and, and when they left uh, Grunge's sanctuary, they found that Tenderis had seen them the day before from Delrook Spear and had gone uh, and laid down at the edge of their sanctuary waiting for them to wake up. Tenderis then led them uh, on a stealth mission through the town because they decided to avoid going through the lake, which may have made them fight a lake monster, which I'm a little disappointed in. Uh, they, <laughs> uh, as they were going through the town, everything went fine until they got to the guardhouse. They actually like did well at the guardhouse as well, but then at the final moment, uh, a couple of bad cell checks from Gary and Feynora caused them to uh, just make the sorcerer there uh, just try to detect magic because he just felt a little bit off. Uh, this led to a running chase fight across the bridge where uh, Alara turned into a dog mole and kind of like ran ahead uh, and left everyone else to kind of fight on their own. Uh, Grunge and Tenderis were downed uh, and nearly died uh, and uh, uh, the only thing that saved them was a last second counterspell from Garrick uh, that stopped Grunge from permadying on the bridge. Uh, as they pulled their bodies into the hole, they closed the doors behind them and put the immovable rod in place. Uh, this uh, attracted a Remoraz, which was brought in by chat, uh, which they fought in the hallway. Uh, they, uh, Grunge launched a wall of fire, hoping that that would hold it back, but the Remoraz fucking loved that, uh, and it started to fight but the party was able to defeat it while Alara kept running ahead as a cheetah, trying to chase down uh, uh, the dragonborn sorcerer who had nearly killed Grunge and Tenderis. Uh, she was unable to catch up quite with him though, uh, because he, uh, he just had such a head start, uh, and she instead found a door that looked like a dragonborn, but instead it was a statue. Uh, go, uh, the party killed the Remoraz uh, and caught up with Alara at the door, uh, and they solved that all you had to do was get the door to St. Davram, uh, it was a great puzzle by Rand Talmore. Thank you so much, Rand. We appreciate you. Uh, as they were running through the uh, spear after that, they found a magical elevator that they took down into a giant hall that they found filled with cages, filled with beasts that had this black smoke and yellow eyes that they had been seeing uh, on the dragon and uh, other creatures throughout the world. Uh, and they realized that this was probably where they were being pulled up out of the Underdark. They took the uh, thing down one more floor, and uh, despite being well and truly fucked up, they were like, you know what, let's just go fight one of the baddest motherfuckers on the planet. They went in, got their asses absolutely handed to them, and the only reason that Tenderis was alive was because uh, as um, uh, Javram stood over Tenderis holding a lightning bolt at his head, telling Grunge, come with me and we can take down your father together, uh, Feynora did one of uh, her famous banishments, sending the, uh, the Dragonborn General and the Mind Flayer that was in the room into another realm, uh, only for so that they could wake up Tenderis, heal heal him enough that he could teleport them out of there, back to the uh, uh, I believe back to Ula. No, to the grove. The camp. The to grove. the to the Ula, to the grove where they slept. Where and then uh, Alara tree walked them back to Ula, yep. where they discussed it for a second, and then were like, why don't we just go right back to that room, but this time be ready, uh, which they did, and they murdered the <laughs> Davram in about seven seconds, uh, because uh, this time they were good to go, and also I rolled really poorly on how prepared he was going to be. Uh, that is uh, the end of that. Oh, two beholders came up out of the ground, uh, and I left off with Davram dead, uh, two beholders. And Garrick feeble-minded. Oh, and Garrick was feeble-minded. Good oh. And mind player. No, that no, was already. That mind flare was already. Yeah. No, it no, it no, we killed it. it no, you guys killed the mind flare. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, no, the mind flare was there. Yeah. Mind flare yeah. was there. Yes, yeah. Um, uh, Garrick. Oh, I was about to mind flare and they buzzed me on um, Garrick. Garrick, Garrick. Garrick became a Pokemon, being unable to say anything other than his own name. Um, sure. Immediately as the fight began, one of the Beholder was feeble-minded, uh, as a little bit of a vengeance by Alara. Um, afterwards, the party actually made pretty quick work of everything that was going on, considering half the battle, I'd say seven-eighths of the battlefield was uh, hit by an anti-magic cone. The Beholder was defeated, uh, but not before leaving Grunge at one HP. One more damage on the dice roll, I poop you not, uh, Grunge would have been full of dead. Uh, spoiler alert. Um, as we continue on our, from this place, our adventurers decided to split up. We set, they sent up Abby with Alara transformed to a spider inside of Abby's mouth uh, to the sixth floor where they knew uh, Davram's um, uh, laboratory was, uh, and uh, went inside and found out some information. Davram's notes on Tetram and Tetram's plans from his subjective experience. Uh, he had an idea that uh, Tetram was attempting to become the avatar of Del Roque, where uh, Davram's idea was more to lift creatures from the Underdark to use as an army to conquer the rest of the world. Um, the party then uh, exited uh, through the second floor and made their way out of Del Roque's spear, where they transported via plants back to Ula. 
They met up uh, with the king and Terran and spoke to them about what the plans should be after much deliberation. I believe at this point, this is where I'm blanking a little bit. No, they went to the Yeah. No, no, that's when they went to the Isle of Mouse. Yeah. Sick. Now I know where we're going. Uh, they transported, <laughs> they transported via, pla via plants right to the Isle of Malice, uh, an old tree that Alara remembered. Uh, Alara, knowing that to pass through the portal uh, to her village, she would need her quarry. Um, bounced off the village as a big echo effect happened. Uh, they were attacked by a series of druids and a, a, an earth elemental in moonrock form uh, after revealing herself to be her sister, unknowingly, uh, unknowing why Alara was here when she had arrived earlier that day. Uh, they went to see the chief and Alara's father and after uh, kind of convincing, hey, I'm actually your daughter, they realized that they let in an intruder with uh, Alara's quarry. Uh, the whole village started planning for an ambush, planning for whatever may ensue. As a storm of shadows started raining down the village, our adventurers flew uh, away. Uh, uh, real quick, chief, yes. chief cured Garrick a feeble mind. The chief cured Garrick a feeble mind by using his wedding band as a component. Wow. Uh, yeah, his wife's not gonna like that one. Um, as he flew up and away oh, towards, uh, as they flew up, uh, up and away towards one of the highest peaks, uh, the village knew that there was a little bit of a tether there. Ben, uh, thank you for getting on my postcard. Thank you. Oh, hey guys, hey guys, just quickly. Uh, if you, the only time you're gonna get signed postcards is right now. So if you want them, you gotta buy them right get now. Get them right now. After this stream, there will be no more signed because yep. we're not gonna be together. Exactly. Um, and so the group, knowing that there was uh, on one of the highest mesas in the north of the island of Malice, uh, a little bit of an altar uh, that is magically protected and warded to keep the nightmares out, uh, they made their way there to see Tetram destroying her quarry on it, releasing these nightmares and transforming himself just slightly stronger. The group uh, started battling Tetram as he started summoning shadows and, 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 and wraiths and allops from uh, the ground. Little uh, black holes started appearing on the battlefield, and the group finally defeated Tetram. Uh, I believe that's exactly where we left off, right? No, you went oh, back to the village yeah. and had a night. Uh, Alara got to uh, make up with her family, uh, and it was very beautiful. And then they made their way back to Ula. Ula. Uh, that's when they spoke to the king, they spoke to Terran, and uh, started organizing themselves to go north towards Delroc Spear. Yes, because uh, Earth Titan was on the way. Because an Earth Titan was on the way. Is that where we left off? Or yes. was there any more? Okay, and, uh, sweet. Yeah. All right, get out of here. Uh, yes, there was lots and lots of drama. Catch up with the VOD. This is the plot point. <laughs> lots and lots of love, intrigue, and CW stuff. Yeah. Woo! Nice. The rolling we love drama. All right. Uh, the party then went up to Delroke's spear with a. Um... Nope. Right? At this point. No, we prepared. We we sending spells. Oh to yeah, no no. We thought we were gonna go there, uh, but then we they decided that rather than uh, run to the dwarves to try and get some diamonds, they were going to take the day to prep for a fight with the Earth Titan that was on its way to them. Uh, they uh, grunge uh, was uh, I don't know. There was a lot. They they called her dad. Oh my god, they called grunge's dad. He brought some stuff, but not everything they asked for because they asked for fucking everything. And I was like, no, this is absurd. We're not just gonna give you everything you asked for. Uh, the Tarask showed up the next morning. They prepped for it uh, and they fought it, uh, and it was crazy. The Trask fight was truly nuts. The Dragonborn Sorcerer, who had nearly killed Grunge and Tenderis, uh, was riding it into combat, uh, and he was quickly dispatched. Uh, <laughs> the um, t the Trask was truly a nightmare. Uh, at one point, Garrick was swallowed uh, and was going to die until Feynora did the only uh, spell that my wife knows, banishment, uh, and banished the uh, Trask to another plane, leaving Garrick to fall uh, to the ground, which would have hurt him, but he has feather fall, uh, and I don't get to have any fun. Uh, <laughs> while they were fighting this, there were also two flail snails on the field, uh, which have five eyes, and when they lose their five eyes, they like suck back into their shell, uh, and then they scream, ah! Uh, for uh, five D6 minutes, and then they spontaneously die at the end of that. Uh, they're the funniest creatures I've ever heard of in my life, uh, and I want one so bad. Uh, the Afridi from the forge also showed up. Uh, promised he, he promised he would see them again, and he did. Uh, the Afridi was basically made absolutely useless this time by Grunge. a uh, incredible fear from Grunge, uh, and a synaptic static from Grunge saved the party from uh, a TPK. Uh, wow. Like truly, they, they would not have, without that minus six to, or that minus D6 to everything, they would have been fucked. Uh, they did ultimately kill the Trask, though, but not until after uh, Terran and uh, Gre Garrick were too scared of it, uh, and so they ran away and hid while Feynora was bitten into its mouth from where she misty stepped to its hind leg, 
With that, her teleported from healing. Step. It's part of my oh, Sure, sure, sure. She heal teleported herself uh, to its hind leg, whipped out her lightsaber, and used the lightsaber to grind down its leg, uh, killing the Tarasque and finishing off the battle. Uh, Grunge then uh, used, uh, the, uh, Grunge had uh, the help of the lightsaber to uh, fillet off some hide, which was then turned into an underlining for his already dope dragon armor, uh, giving him enough AC to maybe survive the final battle. Probably not, though. Uh, wow. And Spoiler. they, uh, him, his father asked if he would spend the night teaching the other mages a little bit of necromancy so that they could raise an army of the dead together. Uh, this caused Grunge to use all of his spell slots uh, and Chantel to hate me because for the remainder of our session, she was like, wait, I can't do anything, I don't have any spells. Um, <laughs> but it was a really cool moment when they woke up the next morning and Grunge and Grunge's dad, Grimswold, were having kind of a sweet moment on the battlements because they had raised this army together and for the first time they had like a father-son activity, which was bringing back the uh, corpses of their enemies uh, to fight uh, against oh, yeah, their brother. enemies. Yeah. After this, Grimsold was like, hey, can we go to Delroke Spear again? Uh, because I know more than you guys do about stuff, uh, and maybe I can interpret the notes better, and we can see and what... that was my suggestion. Sure. I guess it was my <laughs> wife's suggestion. I, I don't know. Uh, you'll have to watch the VOD. Go watch the VOD. Uh, maybe watch it over and over and over again. Uh, the, the ads on them are limited because we're all degenerates, uh, but we still get something for that. The party then went to Delroke Spear, found a portal room, where um, found a portal room where they uh, had to solve a portal puzzle sent in uh, at the last second, which I really appreciate. It was very fun. Um, and uh, then they went up to uh, the office where uh, Grimswald discovered that there was a portal behind the Kin of Kuhn in the Feywild, and if they could just get to the plane of the Feywild, Grimswald might be, they might be able to like get out the backside uh, behind the Kin of Kuhn and uh, attack the throne room where the magical souls of all of the magicians that were used to enact the tectonicum were being held. Uh, and so at that point, they teleported again back to, um, I don't know, and, somewhere. I haven't teleported yet. OK, no, magic over. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, we found a wand and a mask. And the magic oh, body. Oh, 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 They found a mask uh, and a glitter oh, wand. Yes. The glitter wand, which um, our Kickstarter user who put that in said, this is a useless item. And I was like, you don't understand the power that you've created. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, and uh, a mask. Uh, it was a druidic mask, and so Grimswald couldn't identify it, and so uh, uh, Garrick went to hand it to Alara, and when both their hands were touching at the same time, their bodies freaky frighted, uh, and they had each other's stat sheets, but they never fought because Matt's a coward. <laughs> wow. uh, we are grateful that we did not fight. We are so grateful. Level 17, uh, that's Opposite. Oh, it would have been so bad. I'm yeah. totally, yeah, it would have been so hard. <laughs> Bring it. We're gonna see if Matt's a coward after <laughs> this fight, motherfuckers. Oh my god, yeah, they went made their way to the Temper Academy where they took a long rest, finding out that this mask was indeed something uh, enchanted by a powerful, powerful fae. Uh, Grimswald actually used the mask uh, as a tether to plane shift them to uh, the Feywild. In the Feywild, they met a small, uh, helpless, trapped uh, satyr named Gaston Gastro, a uh, food critic in the Feywild. They saved him, uh, Feynora saved him, uh, giving them a favor, possibly to guide them through. Uh, instead, they chose to have Abby with their friend uh, Taddeus, the very oh, man, strange Taddeus. old man Taddeus who was going around eating food and being weird and disassociating. Um, and uh, instead, the favor they asked for was for something to make them stronger and smarter. He gave them all these berries that turned a few of them into Garrick as well. Um, as the, the, gr the group of Garricks are there, um, during this moment, uh, prior and after, a, a lot of wow. existential crises happened. Garrick and Alara's body, feeling her wisdom, feeling her emotional intelligence, started processing a lot of the trauma that he had, uh, that he couldn't know. He, his memories weren't there because his intellect wasn't there, but his emotional intelligence and ability to feel was there. So he started feeling a lot of that pain that he repressed for over 16 years. Uh, Alara, uh, now being hyper-intelligent but having lower wisdom, was unable to read the people around her, making her feel absolutely absolutely strange and helpless. One of her own superpowers taken from her. Yeah, that was our encounter. It was uh, internal. And then he gets to feel like Emotional. Yeah. To feel things with his hands again for the first time in yeah. 16 years. Yeah, yeah I do I do yeah. damage to the you players, not the characters. Like this, and I was like, yeah. Um, they traveled to the Feywild and made it to the Court of the Moon. Uh, uh, passing through to the Court of the Moon, they met the Archfey of the Moon, Seluna Dion. As Seluna Dion oh knew Taddeus, Taddeus being a regular around here, there was some will they, won't they, have they between Taddeus and this magnificently uh, beautiful Archfey. Um, the Archfey. Uh, they asked the Archfey if they could um, essentially uh, have their body swapped back. The Archfey said, sure, but you gotta do something for me and you gotta do it within the end of the day. Um, 
And if, if you do this for me, but within the end of the day, if you don't, you'll be permanently swapped back and nothing can change that. Um, afterwards, uh, Taddeus asked if he could get his special trinket back from her. And so Taddeus roped in the group to another mission that kind of coincided with them to defeat the portal guardians that the bugbear emperors had put at the edge of her realm. Uh, the party then traveled through the village, finding the black dragon that they had banished, who yelled at them saying it's been years since he saw him. He, they, he had a little tiny wizard beard, whimsically, and a little wizard hat on his head as he laid down. A hydra was summoned by chat, and they fought and made moderately decent work of the two. Uh, they took some damage, but at this point they were level 17? Level 17? Uh, yeah. Crazy. They then made their way uh, to the edge of uh, the realm where they saw the portal gleaming through the forest until they were met by a shade of what Garrick would have been had he not lost his powers. Uh, this shade of Garrick wore red with blue trim, signifying the Archmage of Evocation, specializing in fire, a path that he had chosen and knew he was going to be. He had a memory of when he discovered his Meteor Swarm spell, his Oppenheimer, uh, as he discovered this magical spell, this big beam of, dis this big uh, boon of destruction that he never had the chance to use, nor never really wanted to use. That's right, we are the Oppenheimer group. Um, the group, the group engaged, started fighting with this uh, Garrick, but not before a planetar was summoned by chat. Um, they started fighting the planetar as well, and then trying to dispel an invulnerability spell after Garrick tried to throw arrows at this, uh, sorry, Grunge tried to throw arrows and at Grunge. this, Grunge fought, fired arrows at this Garrick, doing no damage, as he had a couple spells cast on him. Um, another version of Garrick appeared out of invisibility, counterspelling that dispel magic. This time the opposite, blue, a blue robe with red trim signifying the lightning rep he would have taken. An arduous battle happened. They were dealing roughly 120 damage of AoE around that could not be resisted. Um, afterwards, um, through fighting, uh, through heals, it was pretty stalemate until Grunge was finally slain. Brought down by the planetar and impaled, Grunge died. Um, the group then, through arduous effort to manage to finally defeat the Garricks, but not after their ends went. Tarrant went down a few times, Taddeus went down, was brought back up, and started counterspelling to his ability. There was a lot of, like, finger gun and counterspelling. And Tendi, not Taddeus. Tendi! There's so many T names! A lot of T yeah. names in this party. So Look, many. they came from the Kickstarter. I don't know what you want me to do! No, it's great okay. names. It's They're okay. They're T's, P's, and K's. T, P's, and K's. Tendies. But no TPK. Oh it was it, so we that we actually designed nice. the TPK part as a foreshadowing to what's about to happen. Yeah. Um, oh, afterwards, the group attempted a couple divine interventions, and uh, divine intervention, also AKA Deus Ex Machina, something I totally didn't say wouldn't happen earlier in the game. Um, but but you did. I know. You I, did say I know. That. I know. I know. Immediately before you did it. Moving on. Uh, Taddeus, <laughs> Taddeus revealed himself to be Kevin from the future, <laughs> becoming an archmage after he was saved as a child and had someone believe in him and believe in his capabilities for the first time in his life. That doesn't mean they're going to win here. No, 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 guess what? Because they used that wish spell to bring Grunge back if he wanted to. Grunge had to say goodbye to Marshall, the soul that was tethered to him. But afterwards, Gr Grunge le learned two things. Number one, he learned how to play the bass loop, like instantly. That, like, that's, that's something you would do with a wish spell. Learn to play something that takes like thousands of hours to learn. Um, and he learned that what? Death is kind of mainstream. Coming back from the death... mainstream. Everyone the, does it. Coming back from <laughs> coming back from death, the party embraced, um, had a lovely evening in uh, Taddeus's mansion, which resembled the cave he was first saved in, and then made their way through the portal of the Feywild, and that was the end of the night crew. <laughs> All right, that is the, uh, the uh, congratulations, I agree you guys did so much D&D. &D. Uh, then our party went through the portal, uh, and a, uh, they shocked Lance, a bugbear general, or a bugbear um, guard, who was at, at the mouth of the cave where this portal went out to. Uh, he went out, yelled, hey, there are intruders, before he was charmed. Uh, and then he went out and was like, hey, there was a bat, uh, it flew away. Uh, it worked, <laughs> uh, and so they pulled, Lance went into the cave, uh, he was very, he was actually very convincing. Lance did a great job. Uh, it's a shame you guys got him murdered. Uh, <laughs> then uh, Lance um, joined the party and explained kind of the situation in the Kin of Coon. Uh, I rolled a d20 to see how long they had been in the Feywild, and they got a natural one. Uh, and so they showed up, and the war had happened. Uh, the good guys had lost, uh, and the uh, Grimswald and the mages were being held in a magic prison in the center of town, uh, and the uh, there were two companies of heroes that had been taken to the throne room along with the tribal chief of the orcs, 
uh, the rest of the uh, prisoners of war were outside the town being uh, prepared to be taken to the kin of men later that day. Uh, the party then threw a zombie clot while it was reduced uh, into a lower part of the town where it expanded into a giant zombie monster that started to wreak havoc, bringing all the guards to that part of town so they could sneak into the prison. Uh, inside the prison, they found Grimswald uh, and the uh, Flick and Wick and the other uh, mages uh, where they uh, were attacked by four, uh, uh, by a party of four adventuring heroes, Ruby, uh, Ellis Fixed Fast, uh, Elixifa, Elixifa uh, Verana, and Edmar. Uh, the party realized that these were their backup characters, uh, and instead of killing them, dispelled magic on them, saving them from a fate of being controlled. Uh, the party, uh, the, the, the backup party, then ran out into the streets uh, to provide cover for the mages and for our heroes to escape through a tunnel through the bottom of the thing, uh, where they ran into a magic grate that uh, was, um, uh, it didn't matter how to get through it. Uh, they tried to attack it, the roof fell, and then Alara just dug around it as a dog mole. Uh, on the other side of that, at the base of the Kin of Coons uh, throne, uh, keep, mansion, whatever, uh, they found a sphinx. Uh, the sphinx was not like a regular sphinx, it was a bored sphinx uh, who couldn't remember anything, uh, and so the puzzle was that they had to get the sphinx to answer the puzzle, uh, and then just tell him that he got it right because uh, he was too lazy to figure out if he actually did or not. Uh, it was very funny. Uh, we had a great interaction, and uh, I actually love that character. Thank you so much. Try and tell more for also submitting that puzzle. And we promised Speaker. we'd see him again. And we did promise we would see him again. Uh -huh. uh, the party then went upstairs, uh, threw some glitter into a kitchen, uh, saw a large bugbear enter the central chamber. They went back down into the basement, ran all the way to the other side of the building where Alara spoke, briefly spoke to a child as a dog mole. Uh, in my panic, to uh, try and come up with what the castle's uh, infrastructure will look like. I came up with this um, uncomfortable boy who just doesn't like animals and is being punished and forced to work in the stables by the emperor because his dad is being punished for losing a flank. It, it was a very silly encounter um, and it was very fun. Uh, then they went back down uh, and came up in the middle. Uh, they stole a crap ton of the bugbear emperor's wine on the way uh, and failed their self check because they were too busy throwing bottles of wine in the bag of holding to be quiet. Uh, they ran up the stairs into this main chamber where they saw on the steps Chuck Norris, the leader of the army of the Bugbear Empire, sitting there. Oh, they all, yeah, also they found 300, uh, they found enough diamonds, they have, they have a rivet fight. Um, just one, right? Just one. Just one. Uh, they then found Chuck Norris sitting there waiting for them. Guys, please, I'm almost done. Uh, they, there was an, he put down his axe and challenged Garrick to one-on-one -on -one combat, uh, and they uh, both uh, shook off whatever weapons they could. Garrick uh, can't. Uh, and in this anti-magic chamber where none of their party could help them, uh, this guy and Garrick fought mano e mano. Uh, in the middle of the fight, Grunge did bite the guy in a moment of anger, seeing Garrick kind of getting beat up quite a bit. Uh, I rolled very well. Uh, and uh, then Chat hasted the bugbear, uh, allowing him to launch a flurry of blows that did 75 damage uh, against Garrick's 70. As Garrick's body skittered across the stones, uh, Feynor's circlet warmed up, uh, and her death ward that she had placed upon him, which was divine and not arcane, uh, worked within the anti-magic chamber uh, and brought Garrick back. Uh, they went, uh, he, with one HP, he landed a flurry of blows uh, that brought the bugbear general to within six HP of being dead, but he uh, did not quite finish it off. In the moment before this general was going to smite him from the earth, uh, the party had one last chance to influence this chain of events, and he looked over his shoulder at the lovely and wonderful Feynora, uh, and she told him for the first time that she loved him. Uh, third time, third time. Yeah. Fuck it, the third time. Uh, <laughs> and her love and trust in him inspired him another action surge in him, giving him the strength to finish off Chuck Norris, snapping his neck uh, in a wonderful move. The keep then exploded into white light. It was very strange until they realized that they had been teleported to the realm of Felrok, the god they all believed to be well and truly dead, uh, slain by Joella 1900 years ago. Uh, Felrok revealed that she was dead, uh, but gods are weird and time is a circle. Uh, and so she was able to pull them out of the realm uh, as a thank you for everything that they had done. It was revealed that the uh, constant power increases that they had been feeling was the last vestiges of Felrok's ability to touch the world. Uh, and they got to share some uh, wonderful final moments together before the final fight. Uh, uh, Grunge's exhaustion from being dead was gone, all of their spell slots are back, uh, and they ate a hero's feast uh, before being teleported back into the uh, chamber in front of the door where they are ready to enter and fight the Bugbear Emperor as he is in the middle of summoning Delroke, the god of death and chaos, into the world. That 
is one week of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Woo!